for deeper insight into the finances of this nation. Let's go to Scott Phillips, Chief Investment Officer from Motley Fool. Scott, good evening to you. Energy stocks drove the market higher today. Soaring oil and gas prices have a part to play in that. Tomo, good evening. They certainly do. And while every bit of attention has been focused on the iron ore price and other things around the world, Brent crude is now at its highest price since October 2018, if you can believe that, effectively three years, and its fifth straight rise. The good news, I suppose, if you're looking from a look, if you're driving a car, it's bad news. Petrol price is probably on the way up. The good news is it means the economy globally is getting back into the swing, and that's good news for everybody. Now, Scott, renewed optimism about Australia's path to reopening um, has benefited travel stocks. <laughs> An astonishing day for travel stocks. Flight Centre up 7%. Webjet up 5% to its best price in over 12 months. Even corporate travel up another 3%. And those businesses, of course, almost in that order, focus on domestic Australian business. So Flight Centre doing best with the news that New South Wales will be rolling back restrictions, even though Victoria's Premier has said, not us, not yet. Uh, but I think investors looking past this and hoping that maybe in months to come, we will see more planes in the sky and more business for those travel agents. Yeah, fingers crossed that it does stick to the, pretty much to the plan. Uh, now, the fate mm. of Chinese property developer Evergrande still hangs in the balance tonight. Yeah, this has been a couple of week long story, Tom, and it's not over just yet. Interest payments still due by Evergrande to its debt holders. And the question really, of course, is what happens next? For those who haven't been following the story closely, China's second biggest property developer and the world's most indebted company. Its debt load is larger than any other business in the world. What happens here, we may, we don't know, may well have contagion effects around the world or simply might be contained to China if indeed the Chinese government lets this one fail. The financial community is on tenterhooks. All right, the wait goes on. Now, Wall Street, how's it looking tonight? Uh, a bit of good news, a bit of bad news. If you like your industrial <laughs> stocks, the futures are up. If you like your tech stocks, it's down about half a percent. Net, net, the S&P 500 down just very, very slightly. We'll call it line ball and hope for better news overnight. We'll wait and see. Scott Phillips, as always, thank you.